Hello everyone! So, some of you guys might know that I've been coaching for Moonlight for a bit now, like about a month and a half or so, and I have thought about doing a mini-series on the second channel talking about some of the concepts and things that we go over to improve, and some of the stuff I have them work on, so this will be a little bit of advice that you guys can maybe follow, you know, so I won't be as specific as I am with them, obviously, but I want to take the chance to explain some more advanced concepts or basic things or whatever. Uh, I've kept this topic pretty simple, for this one, which is just active versus reactive positioning. And we're going to use this map here, Mincemeat Metalworks, as an example, because it has very obvious active versus reactive positions. So first off, let's take a look at an active position. In an active position, your actions influence the enemy team. So for example, an active position on this map is dropping on this right side. So what do I mean by influence the enemy players? I mean that they have to do something, right? So if I'm a shot in mid... You know, I ideally want to get out of mid and move forward to win the game. But if there's a guy here, I have to make a decision based on whatever this guy is doing. So as the person dropping, I influence what the other players have to do. If they want to throw sub weapons, if they want to shoot at me, if they want to pop a special, or even if they just want to look at me. Like if we have a shot player who's shooting and looking this way versus a shot player that's shooting and looking this way, that in itself is value. Where people look is limited. You can't see everything. And obviously this camera B POV is less helpful than this one is. You know, if we're just looking at it objectively. So if you're in an active position, then enemies should be seeing and doing things because of where you are, not the other way around, right? Now, it comes with its own downsides. There's risks. And mainly without enough information, it's punished. So for example, if I drop down here and then a shot on the enemy team is already sitting here, and expecting it, then they can just shoot me, and I'm going to die, and I'm not going to get much value, and it's going to be over. But here's what an active position at the right time can do. I actually have an example for this. It's on the same map. So, uh, this is Max Light, because Nolan was on a cruise at the time. So, Max is 200 over here. We're fighting Jackpot. This is Madness and Q. So, Max makes the decision to drop on this right side to try to open things up. You know, we're 4v3, but there's no major advantage, uh... That we've popped right now. We haven't actually committed to using these specials. So Max drops into this bottom right corner. You can see that Jared and Madness immediately try to respond to this quickly. They both look. They both rotate over here. And from here, Max was kind of just playing a stall. He's not really going for a kill. He's just playing around this little bit of cover over here and trying to play his life. The second they all look at here, look how open this part of the map becomes. And Mincemeat is a map that's known for being difficult to move through, right? So this area is now free. The top left is free. The only thing looking at it is a pencil, which can't actually be in this space they can only watch over it leafy jumps in and max does a really great individual play you know he stalls around for an incredibly long time and ends up trading someone out before he goes down but even if he didn't get a kill pulling everyone here and you can see even the pencil turns and looks here you have all of jackpot condensed in this small cramped area looking into a corner that allows moonlight to just walk in for free and win this team fight all right so that that's an example of an active position i think a reactive position is a lot more understandable and in fact we've already kind of covered it this is a reactive position just on your team side of the base in a reactive position you cannot move or see very easily so for example if i'm a splatter shot on the other team and i'm thinking of flanking this right side i might i might sit here you know in this patch of paint from my perspective here i can't even see the paint over here very well you know i could barely see it if i'm like jumping and turning my camera and like restricting it more i can see people up here but it's hard to see anyone coming from the right this truck kind of blocks it and even if you're here i can't see all of mid like if they're coming on the right side of this pillar i won't see it so you can't move easily because i can't just swim through mid and sometimes you can't really see other players as much the only thing you could really do from a reactive position is punish mistakes which is what i talked about already you know jared or a shot player. <laughs> I'm going to use Jared because I just watched Jackpot. Drops down here, I shark him with the tent, and boom, they're dead. You know, really cool. But these are more defensive. Sometimes these are sharking locations where you try to bait someone down. And if a mistake does not happen, this is the most important part. If a mistake doesn't happen, if a player doesn't drop here or give you a kill, you don't contribute to the game very much. Like, I can, I can paint the zone, but I can't push anyone. I don't have much information... And I'm, like, subject to being dropped on and, and punished myself. So, these are the positions mirrored. The dynamic is typically you want to set up active positions. So, for example, if I'm a 10 and not this 
damn thing. Right, I launch a shield through mid. The other team has to look at the shield. You know, maybe they want to shoot the shield. And because of that, that might set up time for someone else to drop here, try to get behind this cover, maybe go over here, maybe go into this corner and try to take attention. So you can set up an active position. You can also do it with something like a special. You know, maybe you pop a crab tank uh, to clear some space and then as the crab's shooting at everything, someone drops here. Just for instance, okay? So you can pull attention or you can use resources to clear and activate the position. And then the reactive position can sometimes be left with less guard. Like if you're pushing really aggressively and you have someone who can watch this, like if my whole team is pushing, you know, like I have one front line here, front line here, front line here, then this flank doesn't really need to be watched. No one needs to sit in the reactive position because I can have a pencil who sits, you know, like here or on snipe is rotating. And they're not really in any danger. Even if someone drops, they can't really reach the pencil. So the pencil can now sit and charge and shoot at this location, and you don't need someone to sit in this position to watch it, which frees up a player to play further ahead. So, that's basically the concept. It's reactive versus active. There's advantages to both positions. One is not strictly always better than the other. If you're fighting a really aggressive team, sometimes being able to play in positions where you know they're going to have to go, recognizing that, hey, this is an active position for them, you need to be aware of players going here would get a lot of value. We have to find a way to deal with it and deal with it quickly with as minimal resources as possible. There's a lot of different uh, stuff you can do in terms of how we deal with it. And mincemeat is very simple with like a very obvious active and reactive position. But other actual stages will have more than one active or reactive position or spots that can kind of play to both. This is just a very obvious example because this is very, very simplistic map design even after the rework. So... Being able to switch between these positions, know when they're needed and what parts uh, you need to do in a team fight, I think are very important concepts, especially uh, at higher levels of play. One thing that will be a pattern if I continue the series is at top level play, the concepts are oftentimes the same, but the execution window is smaller and there's a better understanding of it. So a team like Jackpot, for instance, is very good at taking space when teams give it up. If you position even a little bit passively, Jackpot is very good at walking into an area and actually taking it. You can see it a lot in the tournament matches. They start to struggle more when they fight teams that don't give up space as easily, typically when they fight in JP tournaments, for instance. That's just a bit of a synopsis for them. But a lot of other teams, and the majority of them, have a problem further behind that, which is you don't take the space at all. A lot of higher level matches, or even like at the very bottom of plus one level or top level matches, have a lot of times where a space is just free, but people are too scared to walk into it. It also happens a lot in tournament finals because nerves kick in. And when nerves kick in, you're more afraid to make plays like this. So for example, this happened quite a lot in the jackpot versus FT win set. And whenever that happens, it means bazookas get a lot more value because if you're not gonna take positions with your guns, Eventually, Azuka will take the position regardless of what you do. You can't just sit there. So, that touches on more important concepts like speed and how teams play and stuff like that. And we can get to that in a future video, but this is just a very basic overview of active and passive positioning. It's my first time really doing a video going over a concept like this. And obviously, it's very different from one on one coaching where I can be more specific and go over what players themselves need. So, if you have topics that you want to see covered or things you want to see analyzed, let me know. And maybe I could also review some tournament sets like. I could talk about some top-level sets like the FT1 Jackpot 1 we saw in Sandoku, for instance, to give a bit of a review as to what teams are going on. So if this is something you want to see more of, please let me know. I'm just trying this out. Uh, and if you don't, then that's fine. Don't have to do more like this. But I'm up to put a little bit more of the general advice that I've been doing as we go through coaching with Moonlight uh, to be able to be a public resource. So if more people want that, then that's cool. All right. Thanks for watching.